beautiful day here at the end of March. Brought the feeder up to the garage. Need to get out on a bike and ride today. How about this bike? Just gotta figure out how to get it out of the truck. Triumph Scrambler 400X. It's just the cutest little thing. Gonna be real fun, fun to play on. Uh, just for scrambling around here in the Amish countryside. And a lot lighter weight. It's a little 40 horsepower fun machine. She has spotted the new motorcycle in the back of the truck, but it looks like my Super Tenere. And so she thinks I put the Super Tenere in the back of the truck. And now she's looking at it again. I think she's becoming suspicious. And there she goes. She's speeding away angrily in her Equinox. Sure, I like being married as much as the next guy, but one thing that you've got to recognize in that state is that they don't like it when you buy motorcycles. So I got this beauty at Works Power Sports in Fort Wayne, W-E-R-K-S, Works. And they're a Triumph dealer. They also have Indians and uh, some other stuff, Betas. But this uh, this Scrambler was there. <clears throat> so pretty excited. They helped me get it loaded up. And uh, even let me bring this uh, ramp home so I could unload it myself here at home. So first thing to do is find a handy hill. Oh, yeah, this should work better. <clears throat> There, nothing to it. Go up. Why don't these bikes have a reverse? Well, the advantage is it's a much lighter bike. And that kickstand will sink right down in there. Handy two by four out. I think we can I think we can go ahead and ride it out of here. Little putt putt. And we're off. It's off-road in the lawn. Hear the mighty roar of the powerful 40 horsepower single cylinder. Okay, it'll be fun to do a little comparison here between the Scrambler 400X and the mighty Super Tenere XT 1200. Oh man, it's a big bike. I would not have gotten that out of the back of the truck. That's for sure. There you have it. With the obligatory red and gold scheme, the Super Tenere and the Triumph Scrambler. I shall call her Mini T. She shall be my very own. How nice. The story on this is I tried to rage retire. Give them two weeks notice and retire sick and tired of working and uh, they talked me out of it apparently they can't live without me so while I'm in the process of training my replacement I thought you know what I shall comfort myself with another motorcycle and so I have <clears throat> all right well got my temporary tags on there I think I can take 
take the little rascal out on a short ride. It's really warm. Uh, we've had some rain earlier, <clears throat> but uh, we had some sun, then the clouds came in, but I think we can go give this a test drive. I mean, really, I think, I think the Triumph Scrambler 400 is maybe half the weight of uh, the Tenere. So, you know, that, uh, I'm an old man. Maybe uh, I'll just use the Tenere for big trips across country and a little scrambler will be for terrorizing the neighborhood, the gravel roads. All right, let's go give her a test drive. And we're off. Yes, the swamp is flooded. The ducks are enjoying it. I did a test drive and liked it quite a bit. It certainly is not 115 horsepower Tenere or 140 horsepower FJR, but it is a 40 horsepower bike. And it's not bad. There'll be a lot more wind noise because there's no windshield. I really was not displeased with the power at all. It's very linear, as the YouTubes that I watched said it would be. Very linear across the uh, RPM range and through the gears. So it does just fine. I can stand up on it very comfortably. Ooh, horses. But how will she do in the great test of gravel? Oh, a nice lightweight bike. Won't have any trouble picking this one up. This is perfect for these little gravel back roads. Suspension is very soft. It's not really meant for bombing around on single trails. But uh, it's got enough travel to be useful, they say. How would I know? 19-inch front wheel, so makes the control out here in gravel land feel that much more in in control as opposed to out of control. Oh my, such a different feel. I've been riding very large bikes for a long time. I think the list price was 55 US. I got it out the door for just a little over seven. When you consider I paid 11 for the Super Tenere, a 2015 Super Tenere, oh, I forget how many miles it had on it. I think it was like 14,000 miles. It had hardly been used at all. And it came with the Jesse luggage. And it was, uh, well, it had, uh, had the crash bars put on it. So, you know, you cannot beat a used bike. You just, uh, I don't know if you'd say they lose their value or what the deal is, but I mean, a brand new Tenere is what, 18, 19, maybe more. I haven't looked in a while. So, you know, this thing is, a half, almost a third, the price of a, of a new Tenere. But if you want a Tenere, and you should want a Tenere, then you want to get them used. They're all farkled out, and you can get them for a song, relatively speaking, anyway. I looked into selling my FJR, and I'd, I'd be, it's a 2005, it's got, what, 30,000 miles on it. I mean, it runs like a dream nothing wrong with it at all and uh, still has all that power and excitement that it ever had but I'd be lucky to get <clears throat> I'd be lucky to get 3,000 for that FJR so you know it hardly makes any sense to sell it at all so might as well keep it back on a little bit of gravel here so all the YouTubes I watched them if not all I watched most of them and uh, what they say that was true, the first gear, yeah, is pretty low, but they made it sound like it was going to be a lot of, a lot more jerky. I haven't noticed that at all. I don't really have any trouble just taking off, and so I don't, I don't really have a problem with the gearing. And at the higher end, I haven't, I haven't taken it all the way up, but I had it, I had it 70 or 80 miles an hour, and I think it was in fifth. So I still had six gear and uh, headroom. Still had headroom. I don't think it's going to be any problem at all for the kind of riding that this is. What else did they say? 
Oh, there was some kind of an ECU flash that needed to be done, but apparently that was just an issue on some of the very first bikes, so I don't know. I think they, what would somebody say? They said if they pulled the clutch in, then sometimes the engine would just die, so the thing would, would kill itself, and then it would start up okay, but I haven't had any issue there at all either. I mean, I can tell that it's a softer suspension, but it's not like super soft, and it does kind of help absorb some of the washboards and potholes and things, so I don't have any issue there yet. Uh, the seat was uh, said to be quite uncomfortable, so we'll see. I haven't been on it long enough to know. It feels fine so far. The price point of this bike? My goodness. It is just fine and dandy so far. Two-year warranty on these on these guys, which uh, it's a Triumph, so that's probably not a bad thing. Unlimited miles, so two-year two-year unlimited miles. So the idea is just ride this thing for two years a lot, and uh, if it's going to have something go wrong, then find out. Manufactured in India in the same plant as KTM, they say, so what does that mean? I don't know. So we'll see. We'll see. There's not much that can go wrong on this guy. It's pretty basic, but I don't know. That's fifth gear, and I can just give it some throttle, and it, it goes on up just fine. Plenty of oomph from the mighty 40 horsepower engine. It's... Um, They've got it rev limited now because it's still in the break-in period, so I got a whopping 24 miles there, it says. 500 miles I take it in for the break-in tune-up. I guess they check the valve clearances and change the oil and do all the normal stuff. But then they uh, remove all the restrictions that, uh, that are on it, so I don't know. Maybe we'll get just a, a smidgen more power out of it once to get through that phase. Here's some gravel. It's got traction control and ABS. I have them on now. You can turn them off for being a hardcore off-roader dude person, which I'm not, so perfectly happy to leave it on for now. Ah, it's just so light and it's narrow. Not having a great big fairing up front is kind of hard for me to get used to. I haven't really rid, ridden many bikes. Don't have a huge fairing. So, you know, I feel like I'm right out there, right out there on the road. I'm right, right out in the wind. Definitely more wind, but not bad. I mean, uh, I've got a cheap helmet. We'll see how this audio turns out with the uh, the wind noise can get pretty, pretty bad. So maybe it'd give me an excuse to buy a, a better helmet at some point. But for now, HJC it is. Kind of a neat area. Tree farm, it says. This is what I want to do. Just get on a little lightweight, easy to ride, fun little bike and just putz around here in the gravel roads of Indiana. Could not be better. I don't know. I think it's, uh, it's in maybe the mid 50s, upper 50s. I think it might even be 58. So the temperature isn't bad at all. I don't even have gloves on. Perfectly comfortable in my Hawk riding gear. I just uh, stay on the gravel. Yeah, plenty of power. I am perfectly happy with this. One of the comments I find interesting on the YouTube reviews is they'll often say, you know, you don't use all the power of a high-powered bike. So if you've got a, and I believe it, if you've got a 115 horsepower Super Tenere, you're just not using all that power. You rarely use all that power. Now, I, I did at times when I was out west driving on those big highways with rain and wind blowing and trying to pass semis and I probably used a lot of that horsepower then but uh, when you're just tootling around like this this 40 horsepower I mean I'm using more of the available horsepower but uh, but I don't feel like I'm straining it at all yet 
So, and if I was on the Tenere out here, it'd just be pretty much just idling along. So good, good deal. What a great little country ride out here. I don't know if I've been out this way. Very nice. There she is. What are those, Karoo? What kind of tires we got here? They are Metzler. Metzler somethings. Metzler, Metzler Karoo Street. But you know, they got some tread on them. Got a little mud on her already. Isn't that just a nice looking bike? I'll give it to Triumph. They, they build good looking stuff. Well, here it is, Spencerville, Indiana, in all its glory. Ah, our first water feature. It's a water hazard. We made it. Mighty St. Joe River. Batcho kids in the street. Small town USA, place you want to be. Yeah, he's uh, he's all in the trailer. Oh, magnolia tree. Oh, it's gorgeous. Well, let's see what's shaking down at the river. Just a quiet Saturday afternoon. Oh, it is obligatory to drive through the Spencerville Bridge. That's yeah, kind of neat. They're trying to fix it up, keep it in good shape. I really like the seating position, very upright. The hands are nice and far apart. The legs are at a good angle. The pegs are down, down straight below. That's quite comfortable. No problem with my behind yet on the seat. Got some forsythia starting to bloom. So I think this seat will be just fine. Hello, back roads, Indiana. I love these uh, kind of cool, cool days, not hot and uh, not sunny. Not a big fan of the sun. 10 years in Tucson was about all the sun I could handle. Incessant sunshine, it would never stop. It's kind of ridiculous. This is more my speed. I'm going to have to have Groovy Bean Studios come up with uh, some Triumph Scrambler 400X theme music. Something a little quirky. It's a Triumph. It's a little different. Now here we see an Amish guy. He's uh, What he's doing is he's working these horses. These horses are being brought up to uh, working condition so they drag these heavy tires around that gets the horses trained they don't like me they don't like this trambler scrambler coming up behind them hard to get the laundry dry on a day like this okay some true off-roading here Out here in the wet grass. Oh, we're sliding around. Oh, that is that's a lot of water there. Do we dare go back in the woods? First ride on the scrambler. Let's do some scrambling, for heaven's sakes. We're in. 
are in the woods in second gear. Oh, some lilies. Oops, killed it. Maybe I should stay in first gear cruising through the woods here like this. The uh, radiator fan actually turned on. Well, we did cut some new trails back in here. What do you think? Couldn't get back in here? Let's find out. See if the Metzler Carouse can handle it. I really would not be comfortable trying this on the Super Tenor, eh? It's just too big. Oh dear, what's this? What do we got? Uh-oh, what happened to my trail? Get reoriented here. Can I get between these trees with this narrow little bike? There we go, we're through. How about here? Busters are busting bark. So far, so good. All right. Hey, the bark busters are working. I'm gonna work on that tree. That's a little too big. We're out. We're out of the woods. We made it. Fun. Definitely couldn't have done that on the Super Tenor, eh? Could I? What a hoot. Hoot and a half. Can we get down in here? How wet is it? Pretty wet. Pretty wet. You got a problem with the tire there. Blocking the trail, man. Okay. Traction control. Probably should have turned that off, huh? Tell you what, these grapevines get you. All right, let's get out of here. Oh man, I want to go that way. No, I better get out. I feel like I need to turn the traction control off. Can I figure out how to do that? TT con. I'm holding it down. I let up, I hold down again. Yeah, how do you get this turned off? Oh, you let go. TTC off. Off road. Off road on. I don't know what all it means. Yeah, well, there's no doubt about it. Traction control is off. And I am not getting up this hill. Come on, mighty Carews. Yay. All right, well, we did it. Yahoo! And I can see having the traction control on through this wet, wet grass. Oh, that was just fun. I couldn't do that on the big bike. I am not skilled enough. Well, yeah, we'll take the back way in here. Maybe the dog wants to go on a run. If I can get stuck here. There's Sabaka the Wonder Hound. Come here, pup. Come here. 
Release the hound. Let's go, girl. Get out here and terrify some ducks. Oh, so slick, so slick. Oh my goodness, so slick. All right, the geese. The geese are on the wing. Oh, that goose is choosing the safe path. What's going on here? Got a stick out in the middle of nowhere. Okay. Go investigate back here. Oh, too much water. Too much water to get back there. All right, we're out. Okay, back we go. Now giving the dog a good run here. She's trying to herd. She has the herding instinct. That's a girl. Nice batch of mud on there. All right, we got the scrambler out and we scrambled. Nice. Oh my goodness. Well, I'm just tickled pink with this thing, as I often am. So, yeah, as I said, a good ride, good first ride on the Scrambler 400, 400X. Very nice. <clears throat> And, uh, you know, I think I'll give a shout out to uh, Works Power Sports in Fort Wayne, Indiana. You better get the appropriate lighting here so you can all see my beautiful face. But, uh, you know, they, uh, they've expanded. They've got all the Triumph. Uh, they've got Royal Enfield. They've got Indians back there. And Fort Wayne, for the first time <clears throat> ever, really, had a motorcycle expo. Power Sports Expo, maybe. And that was a few weeks ago. And, and man, I just, it was our first one. And Works were, were the folks that helped pull that together. And most everybody came down there that, that was involved in, in motorcycle sales in this area. And let us just say that in the Fort Wayne area, there is a paucity, there is a scare, scarcity of motorcycle dealerships. And I, I am just uh, really tickled pink. <laughs> That, uh, that Works Power Sports has, uh, you know, they went to the trouble to put all that together and they're, you know, I know financially they're, they're taking risks and they're stepping out there to build their business and bring in these bikes. And I appreciate it. It's, it's, really, it's really great to know that, uh, that something's happening in this area. So adventure sports, dual sports, you know, it's not like you think of Northeast Indiana as a big hot, hot spot for that. <clears throat> but as the a guy told me at, Power, at uh, Works, you know, you can go up to Michigan, you can go over to Ohio, there's, there's lots of places. Um, but anyway, I mean, there's a Yamaha dealership, but they don't really have much. I think there's a Honda, Honda dealer around. Um, they got some stuff, um, the ubiquitous Harley Davidson, but you know, just in general, there's just not that much that I've been able to find. So, uh, Hey, you know, shout out to works power sports. Um, they were great to deal with. They were just fun. I mean, I knew what I wanted before I went in there, but they, you know, they let me do the test ride and had a great test ride and, and, <laughs> you know, you can't beat the price, right? Um, so, you know what? Yay, Fort Wayne. Let's, uh, let's make Northeast Indiana, you know, kind of a, a motorcycle, you know, haven. You know, there's plenty of Harleys around and they're, they're great bikes. They're wonderful. Um, but, you know, they're not for everybody. And some of us like to do a little bit different stuff. And so, um, 
you know, Works has got, good night, they've got rockets there. <laughs> I was looking at a rocket in person, and it's like, that is one hefty machine. I mean, it's, it's not for me. It's way too much. They got the Tigers. They got, I mean, they have they have the whole Triumph line. And uh, you know what? Just going in there and standing around and looking at them is a lot of fun. <laughs> so uh, anyway, so here it is once again. I've already got it out and I have scrambled and it is full of mud and I'm very pleased, super pleased with this. So fantastic.